Hey there, it's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks for checking out today's video where we are going to be talking about stationary organization. An incredibly important part of being a planner is making sure that your stuff is in relatively organized fashion. It's okay to have a little bit of organized chaos, especially when you're planning, but I think overall you wanna make sure that you know where things are, where to go to get them quickly to help yourself be the most efficient. Over the past few years, I've been using this really great pen bag that I got from Target a while back, and this was always in my backpack. Everywhere I went, it went with me at work. But now that I've been working at home for a while, I need to find a little bit of a different solution here. I've tried a few different things. In my background, sometimes you'll see that I've used these small mason jars to put some things inside of. I also keep a lot of things just in the packaging as well, but it's not always easy to get to. It's in boxes and some other spaces. So I decided that I was going to invest in something to help me out a little bit more. And I got these really great, relatively inexpensive pen holders from Amazon. I'll link that in the description below for you. So what we're going to do today is take this pen bag and some other stationary items and see how we can organize them inside of these containers. Now, while we're doing this, I'll also be taking out some of my favorite stationary items, pens, highlighters, things along that line. So let's go ahead and take it to the overhead view and start talking about some great stationery. All right, before we go ahead and actually break into the pen bag, I wanted to talk about the products that I got to organize my stationery. I'll leave the direct link to these in the descriptions below so you can see, but this was online on Amazon, relatively good price, all four of these for $17.99. People on Instagram and other people showing their desk setup that have similar ones to this, but usually you'll see them set up like this. But for me, I'm actually gonna try to organize them laying down like this. They can sit that way. They're stable, but I like it because, if I grab some pencils real quick, they'll kind of stand out like this. And I think for some of my items that I have in here, especially those brush pens, it'll be nice to kind of have them out facing forward and I can easily grab them and use them. So I've got four of them here. I liked it also because it came in the dark translucent and then this light translucent, so I can alternate them or put them together or do whatever I want. But I think the way I'm gonna approach this project is I'm going to have them kind of themed out. Right off the top of my head, the things that I know that I'm going to have are going to be brush pens. I know that I have a lot of pigment markers and fine liners. I also just have pens and pencils, which I also want to maybe get off my desk and put them into these containers too. And then I have what I'll consider some specialty items, um, other markers and things like that that I'll wanna keep at my arm's reach, things that I've used recently. I'm gonna keep them kind of off screen a little bit so they're not taking over and we can actually take a look at what we have. So before I go ahead and open these up, I've got the pen bag. This is what I've been using for, uh, I wanna say at least two years. And I got this from Target. It's just their Target brand, the UB brand. I like the color, it wasn't overly crazy or anything like that, and it had a lot of space inside of it. It kind of looks like a little bit of a backpack. I'm pretty sure people have made fun of me at work for it, but I also have an elastic band, and I just have kept this inside of my backpack. I don't put this on top of my journals or anything like that. It just fit actually really nicely into the front pocket of my backpack that I used at work. Now, now that I'm working at home for now, at least until the end of the year, I also have been working on some just general desk organization. So I have these reused mason jars that I've been keeping some of my pens inside of. I have another one that I've been using with my pencils, just having them out of reach as well. And I also have my own custom made pen holder out of a hunk of wood that I had from the backyard that I've been keeping some pens inside of as well. Having all of this plus just kind of open stationary around isn't the most efficient use of my desk space. I only have so much of it. So today we're gonna go ahead and condense this down and get the good stuff going. All right, so let's go ahead and actually start with the pen bag itself. So the first thing is in this front zipper. This is where I keep my erasers. And right now I've actually already edited myself down recently because before I was using um, those gummy erasers and things like that, but I was getting a lot of smudging on my pages. But the plastic eraser from Tombow it's my only eraser right now, and it seems weird to have a favorite eraser, but when you use one that's not smudging your pages and getting stuff all over the place, you go with it. So this is my go-to. I don't think I'm gonna be putting it inside of these containers because it's really deep, but I did just wanna show you that this is my go-to and one of my favorite erasers that I use right now. The only eraser that I use right now, if I'm being very honest with you. All right, so inside of here, let's see what pops out first. Uh, pencils, let's go with pencils. So. I've got a lot of pencils. 
I think I told you that I even had some over here as well. I don't know that I need to put pencils inside of this just yet because I kind of like the way that this one works out for me. So I'm not going to put anything in here just yet, but you know, I have a few things. I have one of the mechanical pencils from Muji in here. This mechanical pencil I've had, I think I got it like the first day at my job that I've been at for about five and a half years and I've always kept it with me. I don't know why, but it's always been a, a nice go-to for me. I also have some of my favorite ones appointed inside of here and then just some random ones that I think I've collected over time. I'm not necessarily in love with any of these or I prefer one over the other, but for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just pop all of my pencils in here. They're not going to go into my storage container just yet, but I might come back to it. All right, next, I'll just pull this out, my ruler, my Westcott. You can see it's a well-used ruler. I use this every single day. I'm not gonna go inside of this bin, but I'll probably put it with my eraser since all of those things are kind of used in conjunction. All right, next thing popping out, I would say all of these brush pens. Brush pens are a fantastic tool if you're into brush penning. <laughs> When I first started in bullet journaling and seeing everybody else online, I just saw everyone with Tombows and brush pens and doing like that big lettering. And I was like, I need to have those because I'm going to do a ton of that. And the reality is, is that I don't do a whole lot of that. I do some cursive writing and what I consider hand lettering, but not as big as those the big kind of like bubbly letters as I've seen. And I love, I just can't do them very well. However, I do use a lot of brush pens just for adding like highlights and even just quick color over top of things. Every now and again, I'll use it for some hand lettering, but I have two brands here that I have. I have the Tombows, as you can see, extremely well used. I don't even know, well, this is obviously a black one, but this is a gray one that I think that I got as a part of a lettering kit from a local store. And I really love it because this is what I use for a lot of my like box highlights. And what I really love also is that you can layer it. So if it's too light for you and you need to make it a little bit darker gray, you can just go right over top of it. And then the rest of these brush pens, again, I don't, I'm not good at it. I know that I'm not. I need to take like a class with somebody or something like that to get better at it. But I had those inside of my bag. And then these over here, I actually got, so these are just Premier. So they actually were, I don't know if they're the brand of AC Moore, and I don't know that AC Moore's around anymore. I think that they might've all shut down by now, but this was just ones that I liked because they were ad hoc. Like you grabbed what you needed right off of the shelf. They didn't come in like a full pack. I think you can buy them that way, but I just grabbed some of my favorite colors off of the racks and was just like, hey, I'll use them. And I have used them in my journal. A lot of, anything you see with a lot of color, these are ones that I recently put inside of that bag. So I had them with me. Now. I also have a whole pack of Tombows here. This, again, well used. I think I carried this around with me for a really long time. The whole packaging like falls apart when you do. But these, I haven't, I've kept them inside of the packaging, not because I don't like using them. I actually do really like using them. I just had them away. So I'm gonna bring them out and we're gonna start our first bin here. And this is gonna be the brush pen bin. So let's see how these fit. I don't know if I can fit all of them. Ooh, yes, they fit. All of them fit, ooh, how nicely. <laughs> let's see if these fit in here. Now, inside of these containers, this top one here, which would technically be the, no, I guess that would be the top. It feels different. No, it still works. It looks different, but I think maybe it's the angle. So there we go. So we have the Premier, brush pens here and then all of the Tombows up top here. And that will sit right over here as we continue going through some stuff. All right, next on our agenda, let's talk highlighters. I'm gonna pull out what I can find here. I think that's everything. So inside of here, I mostly use two brands. One because they were the first ones I used, and the second because I've fallen in love with them. So the first ones I used are the mild liners. I thought that I had another color, but I don't see it inside of here. But the mild liners, if you haven't used these yet, they're all over the place. You can get them almost everywhere. They have a nice chiseled edge on one side, and then they have a fine tip one on the other. 
I've used these a lot over time. I see almost every bullet journal are using these in Studygram account. They're just a less harsh, vibrant color to highlight with, and you have a lot of different options with those. The Faber Castell, I love, you know, they sent me these a while ago, and I've been such a big fan of like these chiseled edges because you can highlight different pieces and it's like so neon and pops off the page. They also have a pastel grouping here, which is not as much in your face and look really nice. And then also the first time I ever tried these out, I was like, they look so cool, but these are the text liners, but they're pencil highlighters. And so they work just like any other highlighter works, except they have a little bit of like this highlight waxier kind of feel and you can write over top of them or highlight over top of them and they've been i've used these a lot over time and then also just a normal faber castell text liner here same as the other ones just a different size so keeping all of these let's start a different collection over here we've got our brush pen one so far and then let's go ahead with highlighter and i'll try to be organized and keep brands together, but mostly because of how I use them. I use them differently. I use the mild liners differently than I would use any of the other highlighters that I have here. All right, what's next? We've got a whole lot of Faber-Castell, the pit artist pens, so let's pull all of them out. And I think I probably have, oh. See, like this is, this is why having this bag with so much stuff in it is a bad idea because I think I have more stuff than I know that I have inside of here. All right, what do we got? Most everything's the same. There we go. So Micron pens, these were my go-to for a really long time. I mean, Micron pens are, I mean, they're just around, they're classic. I used to use these all the time when I was in school. I just don't know why I haven't used them a whole lot. I had one in there, but actually, I have all the other ones over here too. I think it's just, I've been slowly replacing them with some of these, well, some, all of these Faber-Castell ones. Micron pens are good. You know, I'm gonna put these inside of one of the other boxes. I think I just don't use them because I haven't had them out, but I'll set them over there for now. So the rest of these Faber-Castell ones, so I have a lot, oh, and there's a Tombow. I love this pen. This is one of the hard Tombow. I forget how to say the name, but um, these are wonderful for lettering. Hello. Why is hello the thing that we write? Is it because of all of the loops? So I'm gonna actually put this with the brush pens just to kind of keep all those likings together. And then we'll go through the rest of these. So Faber-Castell has wonderful pit artist pens, not that gel pen, that uh, I actually fell in love with. They were cool enough to send me a lot of these, maybe last year or the year before. I wanna say it's almost been two years that I've been using these and they've lasted. I think the only one that I completely used out was the extra small size because it's extra small and it looks so nice. But other than that, all of these are from that original pack. So the way that Faber-Castell works is they have their sizes. So S is for small, B is for brush, SC was a small chisel. I don't know that I've actually ever used this one before. It has a chiseled edge. I don't know, how would you write with a chiseled? I don't know. See, that's why, because I don't know how to use this pen. They also have some colors inside of here. So what do we got? Small brush, here's medium. Here's a small brush, SB. And then we've got some specialties over here. Another small. The 1.5s are like really nice and thick ones. These were the gold and silver ones that I just got recently. So we've got these and they also come in colors. So this one is inside of like a cobalt green is what it's called. So it's just the small size, but in colors. And I actually saw a lot of these being used by Nicole at Plants at Blossom. She partners along with Faber-Castell a lot and creates a lot of really great art. I've also really come to love them too because they dry really fastly. They're India ink, waterproof, and high light fastness. And anytime that I've used them, even with highlighters, I don't get any of that um, ink smear or dragging with them. So I'm gonna keep a lot of these out, but I don't know if I need all of them at the same time. You know, like, do I need however many of the brush pens that I have, but I am gonna take all of the brush pens though and put them inside of my brush pen container over here. Let's do that. So we'll create another space over here for brush pens. 
And then the chisel, I'm just gonna actually put to the side for now. Maybe I need to look up how to properly use the chisel brush, but no point in keeping that and kind of taking up more space if I don't need it. So let's take all of these and we're gonna actually put them inside of a new container and we'll pop them all in here. All of the color and shapes are up top here, so I'll still be able to see them. And then actually, because I had all these micron pens, let's go ahead and add them in here too. I'll have to pen test these later to see if they still work. I just haven't used them in a while. And I'm gonna do the same thing. The brush pen is inside of here, a little inky, but I'll put that with the other brush pens too. And then the last ones that I have here actually are the stayed liners, the pigment liners. I got these a while back off of Amazon and I've always liked these. They're the same type deal, right, as anything else. Threes, ones, twos, 0.05s, little tiny ones for little details. I'm not sure why I stopped using these either. So not that I need a ton of fine liners, I guess, but since I have them, I might as well use them. And then as I go through them, if I'm finding that I'm not really getting a lot of value out of them, then I just won't use them. So there is our fine liner bin. So we have our Faber-Castell, we have our Micron pens, and then we also have the state liners here as well. All right, what's next? We're getting to the bottom of the bag. Let's just pull it all out. See, we got, hey, another mild liner, highlighter bin. We've got a few things. We've got pens and we've got jelly roll. We've got another Tombow brush pen. Organizing on the fly here, people. Real life. Let's go through these one-ish by one-ish. My gosh, I had so many gel pens inside of here. <laughs> Let's start with the gel pens since there's so many of them. I didn't realize that I had all of these inside of here. So I am a person that always likes to be prepared. So as you can see, my Uniball Signo DXs, the 0.38 millimeter tips, my favorite pen to use. I've had these for a really long time and I absolutely love working with them. So I always had extra on me. This was the MNGs that were referred to me by a friend here on Instagram and they are um, extremely small, 0.28. So like, let's talk fine line, right? And then you have this, which is 0.38. Look at that, you can see a difference. Hopefully you can see a difference. I know that I do with them. So I'm gonna do something different with my pens. I think I'm gonna put them in a separate container and I don't need to necessarily have all of these out at the same time. Again, I was using these as a way to always be prepared at work, but because I'm at home now, everything's at hand's reach. So I'm just gonna set those pens over to the side. These other ones that I have, this was the Juice Up 03. This is from Pilot. This is another like really fine point one in blue. I don't usually use blue a lot. And these were the Muji ones here um, at the seven. But I'm just gonna sit it to the side too. I need to figure out something else to do with these. This was the point three eight. I think I already did that. So let's just put the pens to the side for now. I don't know that I wanna fill up my storage containers with just my normal gel pen, so we'll come back to those later on. This was the white gel pen. This is another one of the Uniball Signos. This is actually my go-to for anything with gel pen because it works so nicely um, where you can write over top of it. I haven't found another white gel pen that I've liked even more. If you have a favorite white gel pen that like you use for everything, drop a comment below and let me know about it. But we're actually gonna save that. Let's put that over inside of a separate bin. I think I'm gonna do kind of maybe gel pens inside of a separate bin over there. Uh, we have the Mono Twin from Tombow here. This is more like a marker. I don't think I've used this a lot because it's like using a permanent marker inside of your notebook. And I don't know about this paper. You can kind of see it. So, so Archer and Olive, if you haven't used them, I've used them a lot. Their paper is 160 GSM. And this big tip actually ghosts. And you can paint inside of Archer and Olive without anything bleeding through or ghosting, depending on how heavy you're using. Like water, for instance, there's a separate watercolor notebook for that. But 
it does ghost and that's almost like unseen inside of here so i don't think that i've ever really used this in anything else even before i started using archer and olive because this would just bleed through so i'm actually going to like put this away away maybe with some sharpies or something like that i have a different container for those just because that's likely more where i'd be using something like that and then the last thing that's inside of this bag other than this random piece of staple <laughs> are the Jelly Roll Moonlight. So these are gel pens. They were actually referred to me by a follower here on Instagram. I had been looking for different pens to use instead of my blackout books and the craft paper books from Archer and Olive. And they are an awesome like gray tone to a lot of these, some cool and light colors and warm colors. And I actually use these a lot and I don't know now that I have them if I would do anything without them. So I'm gonna stick them over here inside of our gel pen container where we have the one for now. I could potentially consolidate these, but I'm gonna to try to be a really good organizer and keep everything by grouping. All right, so that's everything that was inside of this pen bag. So what I wanted to do with you right now is kind of go through some of the other things I've had out and about. Like I said, I keep some things inside the packaging, like those Tombos that I had were inside the packaging. So I can actually just get rid of this now and start to declutter myself. Some of the things I've had on top of my desk now for a little bit, and these are relatively new. These were those clean color dot markers that I got from paperhouse.me. And I haven't utilized these a lot just yet but I think that I'm going to. So I'll put these inside of one of the other containers. I'll figure it out. But for me, we've got Candy Pink, Hyacinth, and Splash. All right, so nothing against pink and purples, but I just don't use a lot of them inside of my color palettes in my journals. But I'm gonna keep these together for now. Maybe let's put them inside of, actually, these are like markers. So maybe what I'll do is I have an extra container up here for all of my brush pens. I'm not gonna do that now though and bore you with me rearranging my pens, but because of the way that these sit, I've got all of my tall brushes here and then I have all of these like brush pens down here. So I'm actually probably gonna switch these out. I'll just move the premieres back and maybe move those up to the front to grab them a bit easier, but not gonna do that right this second. The other things I have up here were the other ones from Paper House Me. These were those two line pens. You may have seen me use them in some of my other videos, but they have two pen tips on the top that let you draw and do some really cool lettering with. So I'm actually gonna put these with the rest of those Jelly Roll pens and that white Signo pen. So that's inside of there. I also had these, again, these were out just recently. These are like glitter gel pens. Not that I use a lot of glitter. They actually aren't that glittery when you actually use them. I think it's just, see, I'm getting like, I get funny about some of the stuff sometimes, right? You see this packaging and you're like, oh my gosh, this is gonna like blind you with glitter. But it actually isn't that bad. It's more like shiny than I would say glittery. So I'm actually gonna keep these out. I haven't used them a lot, but I really wanna start to use them more. So I'm actually going to switch up my gel pens and we'll put that there. And we have a few like spare ones. This was another one of those, the clean color dots in Fawn, which is the color I would actually use over some of those bubblegum pink ones. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is actually go through my, my pen container here. So you saw before I had a lot of these different pens, right? So we already talked about a lot of the gel pens and the signals that I like. These, I'm gonna pull out because I think it's important to talk about them, because again, I'm sharing my favorites. Those are the Muji pens, seeing them over here. These are like my specialty pens that I have out. So the first ones are going to be Baron Fig. So this was the Baron Fig Squire pen that I got from the Clear Habit Journal Kit. You know, I'll tell you outright, at first when I saw the price of some of the Squire pens, I was like, I don't think I'd ever own one of them, just because it seems kind of weird to pay a fair amount for a pen, but I'm gonna be very, very honest with you that I think that of all of the really expensive pens that are out there, these Squire ones are totally worth it. I've really enjoyed just writing with these. This one I've used for a while. I think the ink is actually starting to run out. Good thing you can replace them. There we go. That's actually a much better example. So I'm gonna write that down and make a note in my bullet journal to get some of the refills for these. So 
while we're talking about that. So the Squire pens, they just have a really good weight to them and they do, they are refillable. So it's not like you're a one and done -er. So you can unscrew the back and then you can get the refills that come inside of here. So I'll have to order them. Something that I want to share with you because I'm talking about Baron Fig in this is that I actually work along with them and Baron Fig gave me an affiliate code that you can use. It's no extra cost for you, but it'll actually get you 10% off of their products. So if you wanted to try any these Squire pens or any of the products from them, um, you can go to their website, just baronfig.com and then use my discount code. It's men who bullet and it'll get you 10% off of your order. So if you ever wanted to try one of these, get the discount. It's well worth it. I've liked these a lot. This was from the Muji store. This is just a one of the cartridge fountain pens that they have. I haven't used this in a while. I might need to clean the tip off. Actually, it's completely dried out. I haven't used it in a while, but I remember seeing it there and really liking it, thinking I was going to use it a lot. So I can't give you like a good review on this because I don't remember the last time I used it. And then my Lamy, this this was my go to pen for so long and I bet you it's out of ink, but you know, this was a this was a Christmas gift from my sister-in-law. But this is a really good like starter fountain pen, like an actual fountain pen if you ever wanted to get into using those. I've just really enjoyed using these. You can get cartridges for them. I actually got the converter, so I have um, a bottle of ink that I purchased from them that I refill whenever my pen is out. And because I'm at home now, you know what? I'm just realizing how much I really miss using this. So I'm actually gonna put this more front and center for myself to start using. I think I'm gonna reorganize these pen holders in just a minute to kind of bring a lot of the things I wanna use forward. But for right now, let's go ahead and sit this over to the side just because I there's no point in putting it away and getting ink all over yourself. Um, there's no point in putting it and organizing it in here if it doesn't actually work. Let's go ahead and put the Baron Fig. So I actually keep my Baron Figs in this little homemade pen holder that I made. They make Squire pen holders now, which I may have to invest in. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this one to the side just because I need to buy the refills and I don't want to put that back. And then inside of my mason jar here, I don't need all of these at the same time. So I'm just going to, for right now, I'm going to put the 0.28. I'll put two of the Signo DXs. I'll put one of the Mujis in here and one of the blue Mujis, you know, and I'm just going to put this juice up one to the side. I haven't ever used this, I don't think. So I'm just going to sit it to the side and then I'll put these with some extra pens as well. This will be joining my friends over here, but um, I need to refill it. So I'm just going to put it to the side to remind myself along with that Squire pen to get a refill. So I think that's all I'm going to do for now. So let's just show and talk about what we did today. So we went through and we organized over here by like markers, brush pens. So I have the Premier, I've got the Tombos, I need to move these up, but these are all the other different brands that I have in here, Faber-Castell, Micron, and uh, the Tombos over here. And then I also just have these clear dots over here. Not that it's a brush pen, but I feel like it's kind of like in that specialty realm to organize inside of. I also have our highlighter one. So we have the Faber-Castell highlighters and also the mild liners here. I wanna pick up a few more of these, so I left an extra space here for them right now. It's okay that I have extra. It's better to have extra than not enough. All right, then on my pigment fine liners, I have my whole collection here of different things. We've got the stead liners back here. We've got the Micron pens, and then we have the Faber-Castell ones up here. So those are all easy at a grasp. And then back here, we have all of the gel pens. We have our white gel pen. Again, these are a bit specialty, but I wanted to keep them a little bit separate. Maybe they don't belong in here. I feel like I'm like going against my own rules here. I'm gonna put those I don't know where they go. Maybe they go inside of my five liner ones. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a bit of a struggle here as I'm thinking through this out loud. But anyway, we have a jelly roll gel pens and then we also have these from paperhouse.me which have like that shine shimmer to them and then the white one. So that, my friends, is going to be my new current organization. 
So I'll have these sitting out on my desk, easy, able to grab these quickly and utilize them. I have a little bit of reordering that I'm gonna do here to get these right. But once I'm in a good spot, I'll make sure that I share a photo on Instagram uh, so you can see how all of this turned out. All right, so now that I got myself all set up, we're ready to go to be a lot more organized in my creative space. I already like the way that this is working. I think having a lot of these items organized by type of pen or marker is gonna be really helpful for me. And that way I just have a real quick go to and grab as I'm designing or doing some other work here. Now, if you saw any items that you really liked, I'm going to leave a lot of the links to those stationary items in the descriptions below. Now, if you go to that store, you'll see things categorized by our materials. I also have a bullet journal section and you'll see a few things in there for succulents. Also, if you're using that affiliate link to my Amazon store, just know that you're supporting me at no extra charge for you. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content around personal organization, bullet journaling, planning, and also plan with me videos. Have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.